is Broadcast Beat Magazine with Ryan Salazar. Ryan Salazar here with Broadcast Beat Magazine. I've got the founder and CEO of Edit Share. How you doing, Andy? I'm doing great. Uh, how are you today? Doing excellent. So tell us how Edit Share got started. Well, uh, Edit Share is about uh, 12 years old. We started in 2004, the beginning of 2004, and we were principally a storage company back then. Uh, we came on the scene with a, a great solution for working multiple people working with uh, Avid Media Composer, Final Cut Pro, and other uh, editing applications. But, you know, we, we weren't uh, around for very long when the storage systems we were making grew to be quite large. You know, when we started, four terabytes was a big storage system, and pretty soon we were shipping 16 terabyte, 24 terabyte, 32 terabyte systems. And uh, we found that our customers were asking for tools to manage all that storage. So we, we started developing workflow tools that complemented our storage. We developed Flow Media Asset Management and Arc backup and archiving tools. It's really amazing, Andy, how the industry has evolved. Like you said, from four terabyte system shipping to 32 terabytes, um, the whole industry is completely file based now. All the tape facilities are, are by the wayside, basically. But you guys have got to be pretty proud of what you're doing. I've seen flow automation, which is really impressive. Could you tell us about that a little? Flow automation is uh, a part of our flow suite of tools. And, and what it allows you to do is automate repetitive and complex tasks that you might have to do over and over again. So, uh, for instance, you uh, might you, you can set up watch folders. That's kind of the simplest example. And every time you drop, say, uh, the contents of a P2 card or XDCAM card into our storage, uh, you can set up automation to automatically transcode or transform that material. Maybe you don't want your uh, MP4 format from the XDCAM files. You want to change them into a QuickTime MOV format. And so uh, automation can do that automatically without you having to think about it. It also will make low resolution proxies at the same time. Maybe it sends you an email to say, or sends your colleague an email to say, hey, guess what? There's there's some new clips to look at. And then you can have other tasks, like maybe your colleague has to approve them before you can use them in some uh, production. So the colleague might have a review and approval template that they access through our airflow tools and uh, they check a little box and, and and that causes flow automation to do something else like maybe okay that means it's okay to transfer it to another space and archive it and send an email to the editor saying approved to use so you can automate these very uh, elaborate w workflow tasks that, that that make production much uh, smoother does your system do the transcoding or does it pass it off to a transcoder like a like a Telestream episode or something to that effect? Our system actually does the transcoding. So, you know, we're not a complete transcoder solution. We can't make uh, files. Uh, we don't make flash files, for instance, or we don't make files for those old uh, Nokia, you know, telephones that nobody has anymore probably in the states or in europe but uh you know we make h264 files which are most people mo most people want we make uh prores we make dnx hd we make you know all the the flavors of blood broadcast codecs that that people might might want and we can turn hd into sd and sd and hd that's pretty exciting because you figure there's a lot of small small mom and pop facilities that either don't you know they don't have the funds to to lay out extra cash for all these different types of systems and and when they can find a product all in one um, that's pretty exciting and not only that it's 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 making your workflow so much faster without having all these different types of systems you know I I've run many a production facility and had you know you have to tie in ten different systems to make it do you know a, a specific workflow. It's very exciting what you guys have going on. Let me ask you this, how essential is supplying a media asset management tool set uh, with every storage system in today's production workflows? Obviously very essential and, and what you guys have is pretty amazing. Well, you know, we, we like to think that we sort of reinvented storage uh, a few years ago. You know, I think it was four or five years ago before NAB. We we decided that we were going to bundle asset management and uh, archiving backup with our storage because, 
you know, your storage is sort of nothing if you can't find your material, right? And as storage gets larger and larger and uh, there are more opportunities to repurpose the material that you've shot, nobody wants to throw anything away. So, so you know, you, you, you just have this growing collection of stuff and if you can't find it, it's useless, right? So having asset management allows you to tag it, log it, tag it, and then in the future, maybe weeks or months later, you can always find it. It could be during a production when you're looking for something, or it could be months or years later when you've actually copied it off onto an LTO tape and you want to bring it back because you remember you had a great shot of, uh, you know, the Golden Gate Bridge with, you know, uh, a donkey walking over it or something. And that's the perfect shot for the TV commercial you're doing. And you can now find it and you don't have to go out and shoot it again. So uh, asset management is absolutely key for being able to leverage what you have and get the most out of it. Andy, we were pleased to give EditShare an IBC 2015 uh, Innovation Award at the, uh, for, for our Airflow. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, so Airflow is a really important component of the whole flow suite of tools. What Airflow does is it allows you to access your facility from anywhere on the internet, right? So most of the flow tools are designed to work in your local environment. Airflow, you just open up a web browser and you could be anywhere in the world and you get into the system. And uh, what can you do? Well, you can organize your assets, you can tag them, you can review them, you can download them, you can upload systems to the central storage. And think of it this way. We hear a lot of people out there talking about uh, cloud this, cloud that, right? I, I love this cloud tool. Well, what they really love is that they can bring people outside their facility into the production process, that they're not stuck having people come into the office. So what Airflow does is it helps you bring them into the facility. We call it a private cloud, right? It's it's a cloud that's created right out of your own office. You don't need to upload your files to some other place in order to get these remote workflow advantages. And uh, we, we've been able to support some fantastic workflows. Uh, we have a customer in New York who shoots documentaries. They shoot a lot of material. And they have people who do transcribing on the other side of the world. And, you know, every day the, the, the rushes are scanned by flow that produces low resolution proxy files. And then the transcribers, I think they, they're in India or the Philippines, can view the material and they can transcribe it right from there. Nobody has to upload or download anything. It's just done right in a web browser. Uh, another great example of this is uh, we have a production company in Germany that is working on a reality show that they were sh shooting uh, from an island in the Caribbean. And they brought a big editor storage system and flow to the island. But the editors and the executive producer were still back in Germany. And every day, uh, the editors and executive producer are able to review through Airflow, through this private cloud that we create on the island in the Caribbean. They're able to review all the material that was just shot and they're able to keep an eye on it. And, and this is great because this is a real world of example of what happened. They didn't like how the storyline was going. They thought they needed to spice, spice it up a little bit. They needed to, to, to create some more dangerous things. It was one of these, you know, island shows where people run around naked and have to survive, you know, eating the, the bark off of trees or finding, you know, mushrooms. And they had to, to, to spice it up a little bit because, you know, the, the German contestants were way too good, right? They just figured it all out in the first day and you know they, they were they were kicking back and they'd figured out how to fish and how to catch uh, animals and you know it, it wasn't too challenging so they had to spice it up so you know they were able to monitor the production remotely and the editors were able to uh, select material to download they downloaded the low resolution proxies, they imported them into Avid Media Composer right there in Germany. They edited rough cuts of all the scenes to make sure the scenes were playing well. And uh, they were able to 
have confidence that either a scene was working or not, or characters were good or not. And when they were done with the production, when they were done shooting, they just brought the storage system back to Germany and they were able to relink the, the, the cuts that they did based on the proxies to the high resolution material. So Airflow has provided a remote uh, private cloud, a private cloud that provides remote access and it brings external people into the production process. That's what most people are looking for when they talk about cloud. You guys have playout servers? We have ingest, baseband ingest and playout servers. And uh, so people do still work with SDI. We, we work in many studios such as uh, for recording soap operas or, we, or variety shows. Uh, we also work in news environments. So there are a lot of reasons why you want to record from SDI signals today, maybe satellite feeds, but we also do Playout. So uh, the playout could be for digital signage. It could be for uh, closed circuit television. We integrate with uh, various automation systems. So we might be doing twenty four seven playout. It's also used in in. Uh, news production, right? You've got a story that needs to be rolled in and it's not rolled in from tape anymore. It's it's a file that's been rendered to storage and it's played out in real time through an through a playout server into the uh, production switcher to go on the air for the, the live news. I see Lightworks. You guys have an editing platform too, right? We do. Uh, we took over Lightworks about uh, five years ago. You know, the story of Lightworks is it came on the market the same year that Avid Media Composer did. It was actually called Avid Film Composer. And uh, the, the two were kind of neck and neck in the film industry. Uh, I think probably Lightworks was ahead. And uh, then, you know, Lightworks was acquired by w another company for a lot of money and they didn't really know what to do with it. And then it was sold to another company. And by the time we got it uh, five years ago, I think it was down to about 180 users worldwide. You know, it really wasn't a very popular program. Well, we have now over 1.5 million unique downloads and a huge community of people who use Lightworks. Most of them download it for free, although we, we have a pro version. The big difference between the pro and the free version is with the pro version, we let you output uh, 1080 and higher resolution and in more professional codecs. You're, you're limited to, say, H.264, 720p with the free version, which does uh, exactly what a lot of people need to do. So we have a lot of users, but uh, we have this very capable editor that's now used for doing lots of television shows. It's still used for many movies. You know, some very famous movies that you've seen recently were edited on Lightworks, like The Wolf of Wall Street or uh, um, uh, Hugo or Shutter Island uh, or the, the King's Speech. So, you know, really it has uh, a, a great following. Founder, CEO, Andy Liebman of EditShare, I appreciate you spending some time with us this afternoon. Well, it's great to be with you.